Welcome to Draw Your Day Creative Videos. My name's Jodie Silverman and I work as an artist for Cartwheel Arts. I've created this video so that you can follow along at home and I'll show you what materials you'll need. Today's activity is all about having fun and letting your creativity out. So let's grab some materials and we can get creative together. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what materials you'll need for this activity. The first thing you'll need is some A4 paper. It needs to be quite thick because we're going to be scratching into the surface so it'll need to be sort of quite resilient so thick paper or card works best. Um, the next thing you'll need is some black paint. So I've got um, acrylic paint here but you could also use poster paint. The next thing you'll need is a cup or something to mix your paint in because we're going to be watering the paint down slightly. So you'll need a cup and you'll also need um, a brush or something just to mix your paint with. The next thing you'll need is some wax crayons or some oil pastels. Um, Either works fine, um, just whatever colours you've got at home is absolutely fine. Um, and then the next thing you'll need is something to scratch with because we're going to be scratching into the surface of the paint. So um, I've been experimenting with coins and it works uh, really well. So I've got um, a 2p coin here and a 1p coin. Um, but you can experiment with different coins because they all make different marks and di different widths of line. Um, so it's quite fun just to experiment. Um, you can also use uh, toothpicks to scratch into the surface and that gives you quite a fine line. Um, so that's quite useful as well. And then um, you can also use scissors, but if you are using scissors um, or anything else sharp, please make sure you um, ask for an adult to help you. Okay, so there are all your materials. You might want to pause the video for a minute now just to um, get all your bits and bobs together. And then when you get back, we'll get creating. So today's activity is called Scratch and Reveal. And it's all about having fun and letting your creativity out. I'll show you a piece that I made earlier. So as you can see, this is really colourful um, and really playful. Um, and there's lots of sort of lines and patterns. So um, you can kind of see that I'm not taking this too seriously. I've just sort of enjoyed making marks on the page and just having a play. So that's our aim today. We're just going to try and have fun with it. So the first thing you need to do with this is make sure you've got a table covering down because we're going to be using a lot of black paint and it can get a bit messy. Um, and also wear some old clothes or make sure you've got um, some kind of apron on just so your clothes don't get messed up. Um, the other thing is we'll be using scissors. So if you need to, please ask an adult to help. Okay, so first thing we need is some paper. Um, and as I said before, you need uh, quite thick paper for this um, because we're gonna be scratching into the surface. So your paper needs to be quite resilient. So thick paper or card works well. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, our oil pastels or our wax crayons just to create an image on the page. Now it doesn't really matter what you do just as long as you use lots of different colours so it's quite fun in a way because you can just experiment and do whatever you like because the image is actually going to get covered up so it doesn't just gives you total freedom just to have a play. So I'm going to start off with some blue um, and I found that you can uh, cover the page quicker if you use the crayon just on its side. So I'm just going to start just putting some colour on the page. Um, and I've started with this because it's my favourite colour. I love a bit of turquoisey blue. And 
and then I'm gonna go for a bit of red because I quite like turquoise and red together. Then I've got a kind of darker blue here. Where's my box of colours? quite lucky I've got quite a, a range of colours here but um, you don't need a massive amount of colours for this you can just keep it simple if you want if you've not got too many different colours sometimes if you just have a limited palette it can be quite effective sorry I don't know if you can hear there's a bit of a racket going on outside So as you can see, I'm just making this up as I go along with different patterns and shapes. Might be quite nice to put some music on while you're doing this and maybe listen to the music and see if that influences all your colours, all your patterns. I think it's quite relaxing as well to work to music. again with this pink quite sure about the colours that I've chosen for this. <laughs> it's quite a strange colour palette that I've chosen but 
it doesn't really matter because it's getting covered up anyway so I'm rushing this a little bit but if you can just try and make sure that you've not got a lot of gaps okay so there's my sort of abstract image um, and what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to paint over it in black so I'm going to paint over the whole thing um, I'm going to use black acrylic um, and I'm going to water it down slightly just so that it's easier to paint with and it goes on a bit thinner um, you don't want it too thin so it doesn't want to be runny so I'll show you now how I'm going to mix it so just want a little bit of paint, just enough to cover the page and then we're just going to get, so you just want sort of a teeny bit of water in there and that's to just kind of loosen it up a little bit. I'm just going to give that a stir. I'll just try that on the page and see how it's covering. So I think we're sort of getting there now to the right consistency. That's still maybe a teeny bit thin because I can still see my um, image through it. Okay, I think that's about right. Sometimes there's a lot of faffing involved in being an artist. Because <laughs> you don't always get things right the first time. Sometimes you really have to persevere and allow yourself to make a lot of mistakes. And I think that's the best way to learn, isn't it? Just sort of allowing yourself to make mistakes and not being too hard on yourself. Just allowing it to teach you how to do things better. Right, there we go. So 
you can see there that I've covered up the whole of my picture. Um, and I just need to allow this to dry now. Um, if you want to speed things up a little bit, you can use a hair dryer. Uh, I have got one here that I prepared before um, that is already dry. There we go. So as you can see, that's nice and dry and my image is completely covered. Um, so now I'm going to start to scratch into it. Um, I think the image that I prepared beforehand was kind of an abstract pattern so I want to do something a bit different with this and I was thinking of doing like a trying to do <laughs> a kind of cityscape um, with some fireworks in the sky so I'm gonna have a crack at that so I'm gonna put my paper um, to the portrait um, and I'm going to start by using one of my coins, I'm going to use a penny and I'm going to create the shape of the buildings. So, actually feels really nice to just scratch into this. I think even if you don't like the picture that you make in the end it's just quite a nice process it feels quite nice just to scratch that paint on so I'm gonna do my buildings I'm gonna make them kind of look a bit 3d and blocky like skyscrapers That wasn't a bad pun, by the way. Scraping skyscrapers. Some in the distance there. Some kind of smaller buildings in front here. So that's what I've got so far. You can see there. Um, and now I'm going to do my windows. And I think I'm going to use my toothpick for the windows, um, see how that goes. So I'm gonna start with the ones in the background. And then for these windows, these are in the foreground and I want them to be slightly bigger so I'm just going to use my coin.
go. And you can see that on my uh, windows. And I quite like where there's orange underneath here because it sort of looks like the lit up from the inside. Um, so I'm just going to grab some scissors. So remember if you need help from an adult please ask. Um, so the as you can see my scissors are quite big so they're not ideal <laughs> um, but I'm going to have a go with these anyway and I'm just going to start scratching in some lines here and trying to make some fireworks. seems to be working quite well. So I'm just going round in a circle. And you have to make sure you get the pressure right with this because if you press too hard you can end up scratching right into the paper. Hopefully that's looking a bit like a firework. I'll try this one. It's quite nice to do it quick actually and you can just get some bit more movement in the marks that you're making. So it looks a bit more dynamic. really makes me want to make try and make the noises of the fireworks <laughs> sometimes I do that when I'm drawing there we go it helps you make a better drawing if you get really involved in it there we have it got my cityscape there and I've got my fireworks in the sky it might also be nice just to do you know a whole firework display I imagine you could get quite carried away drawing all the fireworks and maybe you could do people in the crowd at the bottom yeah there's loads of fun images that you can make with this technique I hope you enjoyed following along with the video today. If you did, please like and share with your friends and family. We'd love to see what you created. Please tag us at Cartwheel Arts and hashtag Draw the Day with any pictures that you post online. You can also email your pictures to admin at cartwheelarts.org.uk and we'll feature you in our Draw the Day online gallery. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.